Ja, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, ich möchte Sie nun zum zweiten Teil unserer Konferenz willkommen heißen, zum Thema Afghanistan auf Sendung. Mein Name ist Thorsten Vollberg, ich bin Leiter des Asienreferats hier in der Heinrich-Böll-Stiftung und ich freue mich sehr, Ihnen nun zwei Frauen vorstellen zu dürfen, die einen großen Einfluss auf die Medienlandschaft in Afghanistan haben. Zu meiner Linken direkt Frau Najiba Jubi. Sie ist Schriftstellerin, Journalistin, unter anderem Herausgeberin eines Frauenmagazins in Afghanistan und leitet als Direktorin ein sehr erfolgreiches, äh, einen sehr erfolgreichen Radiosender mit Radiostationen äh, Station in Kabul, in Herat und in Jalalabad. Frau Ajubi wird darüber berichten, wie sich die Medienlandschaft die letzten Jahre in Afghanistan entwickelt hat, äh, was erreicht wurde. Sie wird uns einen kurzen Überblick darüber geben, welche Arten von Medien in Afghanistan erfolgreich sind und welche Entwicklungen sie bis 2014 und darüber hinaus erwartet. Direkt im Anschluss daran äh, freuen wir uns auf eine Präsentation von Miss Trudy N. Tierney. Äh, Miss Tierney arbeitet für Kabura Production. Das ist das größte Fernsehproduktionsunternehmen in Afghanistan und Schwesterfirma von Tolo TV, Afghanistans führenden privaten Fernsehsender. Zu ihren preisgekrönten Produktionen gehören unter anderem Afghanistans erste Seifenoper, äh, diverse Krimiserien und auch der Afghan Star, das ist Afghanistans Variante von Deutschland sucht den Superstar. Und ähm, ja, wir sind sehr gespannt. Äh, wir hoffen, wir haben im Anschluss noch etwas Zeit für Fragen aus dem Publikum. Ansonsten, wie auch eben, würde ich... Ähm, kann ich, Sie nur, äh, kann ich nur empfehlen, das Gespräch dann auch während der Mittagspause mit unseren Gästen zu suchen. Und äh, ich würde nun Frau Ajubi bitten, nach vorne zu kommen. I would like to ask you to come forward now. Wir sind sehr gespannt. Vielen Dank. First, I want to uh, thank the organizers to meet uh, this opportunity for all of us to uh, be in, the confer in this conference. First, I want to uh, talk about the ten, last 10 years, because it's matching with the name of the uh, conference. Uh, last 10 years, uh, we can call it uh, like a Uh, golden time for Afghan media, because in this period, a number of uh, media grows, and a number of print, uh, electronic media and print media grows. Then uh, the number I will mention uh, after, and also um, the free media in Afghanistan have a, a near 100 years uh, history. But the growing of this number uh, media, which grew during this, this 10 years, it's an amazing achievement in Afghanistan, and it's a unique in Afghanistan. Currently, we have uh, 47 TV channels, 150 radio stations, and more than 1,000 print media around the country. All of them are uh, working good, but some of them stop because of some uh, financial issues, some financial problems. The TV stations uh, around the country uh, succeed to find a lot of audience during these 10 years. But radio because of some reasons, is still the first media in Afghanistan. Because uh, everyone knows that Afghanistan uh, have a lot of problem with uh, lack of literacy. And also, Afghanistan have a high number of illiterate people. Because of that, it makes radio the more popular media in Afghanistan. And a lot of people Uh, in a broad area in Afghanistan use radio. The international community after Taliban supported a lot to establish a number of media in Afghanistan. And it was a good uh, time. 
But uh, from 2004, this support went to be low and low. And in 2010, uh, 2006, uh, a lot of this support stopped, and we had nothing in the budget for supporting Afghan media. It made a lot of problem for uh, Afghan media. In the kind of media, we have a few kind of media in Afghanistan. Uh, we have governmental media, we have the media which they call themselves free media, but they are not free media. They are supported by government. We have a real free media, which the number is not uh, arrived to five, uh, to the finger of one hand, which is uh, very limited in a few, small number. And also the media which established by uh, fundamentals and also warlords. And we call this Tanzimi media, which uh, a lot of Tanzims and a lot of parties uh, establish their radio station, which we can call them uh, free media, because they just changed their uh, gun with the media. In this media, against the media which they are working for democracy and human rights and uh, freedom of speech in Afghanistan. It's a big problem now. Uh, in the other perspective, uh, when the support of international community uh, got this crisis, uh, we got another problem from our neighbors. The, neighbor, the neighbors, which they had uh, agenda in Afghanistan, they supported a lot of individuals to establish radios and TVs in Afghanistan. Our neighbors expend a big money to support this kind of media in Afghanistan. The establishing of this number of uh, media in Afghanistan is a good achievement and good news, but we have a lot of challenges now. Access to information, going to become a big challenge in Afghanistan. In the beginning of the Taliban, a uh, lot of uh, responsible people in the government wanted to talk with, uh, with the media, with print media, with electronic media, but day by day, this become, uh, got uh, decreased, and now, the, a lot of governmental responsibles think the information is their own stuff, and they, want, they don't want to share it with the media. I, I remember and I uh, informed journalists waiting in the door of ministers, deputy ministers, or the head of the sections in the ministries for weeks to get a small information. A lot of people in media use their, their relation with the responsible people and um, friendship with the responsible people in government to get a small piece for their media. This is because we have no the law of, of uh, access to information. The law is drafted but not passed from parliament yet. And it has to be passed from the Parliament. We have a good uh, media law in Afghanistan. Uh, I can call, we have a good media law in the region. But still this media law have a lot of words which in the, um, in the time which a, a journalist go to the Supreme Court, the judge can use it to, against the journalist. And this is also have to be edited. <coughs> Our government is still under pressure of mullahs and want to put a lot of uh, censorship and limitation on the broadcasting on, on the TVs in Afghanistan. If the government want to uh, put censorship in uh, Afghan TVs, 
The people of Afghanistan, a lot of them use the satellites, but uh, unfortunately, uh, Afghan, uh, I can say the Ministry of uh, Information and Culture is working under pressure of mullahs, and it is another challenge in Afghanistan. During the last 10 years, the US and NATO had the key role in, in Afghanistan. And their audience was Western. Because of that, US and NATO wants to use uh, international media, when, uh, especially Western media, uh, for uh, reach to their audience. Our government do the same. Uh, our government, especially Mr. Karzai, respect uh, Western media more than Afghan media. I have an example. During the 10 years, Mr. Karzai didn't uh, interview with Afghan media, and no one remembered that. And he just called the media to come in press conferences. But uh, he didn't answer to the rec few requests and many requests of the media for interview. He didn't reject, but didn't accept as well. After 2000, uh, in 2014, the foreigners uh, want to leave Afghanistan. And this will be a very difficult year for Afghanistan. <coughs> The first probable risk is the civil war in Afghanistan. And we have to defend this. And our media have to be ready for this. So we need the media to establish Afghan debates and thinking. We need the Afghan media to bring up the uh, future leaders with increasing the broadcasting of issues regarding Afghan ownership and Afghan leadership. We need the media to monitor national plans accurately. And also we need the media to do uh, a lot of investigative reports which we have now lack of investigative report in Afghanistan. Agriculture, water, electricity, mineral sources, and education requires more investigation, which should be done by the media in Afghanistan. We need to make access to the real information available for each Afghan. This is the right of Afghans to know what happens in their country. The one, one more thing which I want to share here, it is the problem for the, that women which they are working in media in Afghanistan. They, they accept a lot of uh, danger to, to uh, work for media. It is not easy for a woman to work in media in Afghanistan. Still, we have problem to send a woman reporter in the street because uh, it is a, a problem for us yet. Afghan government have uh, around 86 media in Afghanistan, but no one of these 86 media running by women. They don't want to give the chance to women to run the media in the country. But on the uh, other side, in uh, non-governmental media, we have a good achievement in participation of the women in the leadership of the medias in Afghanistan. I remember around, uh, I know around 10 radio stations running by women in Afghanistan. In the Afghanistan history, this is the first time we, we see this kind of uh, achievement. And for all of this, because of limitation of the time, I don't want to talk more. Uh, 
from this perspective, we, are, we need international uh, community to be not uh, the friend to half the way. We want our friend and international community to walk up to end of the way with, with us, to support Afghan media, to, to do these items which I mentioned before. Thank you for your consideration. Wow. Najib has covered all the serious stuff. Um, I feel like a little, a little bit of a lightweight here today. I work in drama. My name is Trudy Antini. I'm the head of drama at Kabura Productions. Kabura is the production house of Moby Media, which is the largest uh, media organisation in Afghanistan. It's um, a privately owned, fully Afghan owned company, and it was established in 2002 by a family called the Massini family. And they entered the Afghan market with a real vision of bringing international standards of fairness and freedom to the Afghan media. Um, it's been a difficult battle for them. We've had shows pulled off the air by the government. We've had journalists arrested. Um, we've had shows heavily censored. Um, and yet that company that started with one little FM radio station in 2002 is now virtually a media empire. Um, it has TV stations, radio stations, print media and creative agencies. Um, our Dari television station Tolo TV is the number one station in the country. We have a 54% market reach, um, reaching up to 15 million viewers. Our Pashtu television station, Lamar Television, uh, is the third most popular station in the country. And our radio station, Arman FM, is the most popular radio station in the country. Uh, we have 500 employees in Moby Media. Um, a really bright, creative, great young workforce. Most of them had no media training whatsoever before they came to us. And there is a, they're an average age of 24 years old. Almost a third of our workforce are women, and three of our senior management positions are occupied by women. Um, and it's not um, some kind of program run by Moby to try and promote women. These women have earned their places through merit. Um, this isn't a sales pitch for Moby Media, by the way, um, but that is where I work. Um, that is what I do, and that's really the only experience that I can share with you today. Um, being a private company, we don't really have um, a political agenda as such. Um, we're driven by audience demand. And what our audience is telling us is that they want progressive television. They want television that challenges the status quo. They want television that challenges um, accepted traditions. They want television that pushes boundaries. Um, at the same time as being driven by our audience, we do have a responsibility as a company to instill messaging in our program that programming that we think is important to the development of Afghanistan. Um, I and the head of drama, as I said, I'm responsible for all the television serials we make, from your weekly soap opera to your comedy mockumentary series. Um, I have a team of 30 kids working under me, or working with me, should I say. My apologies. They tell me more than I tell them. Uh, a team of working at uh, 30 kids. I basically just oversee them and mentor them in making television because they're an average age of 22 years old. And as I said, most of them come to us with no experience. I arrived in Afghanistan on a three month contract to mentor our Pashtu script writing team in a drama they were doing. I'm still there two and a half years later because I love my job. I love the kids that I work with. They are so passionate about what they're doing and they believe that in the stories they're telling and the programs they're making that they can affect change in society and they can make a difference. Um, and that's why I'm still here there after two and a half years. Now I'm just going to go through, I'm going to show you quick clips from a number of the shows that we've made that we think have impacted on Afghan society. 
I'm not really good with the computer, but I'll give it a go. Um, you'll help me if I get all messed up. All right. The first show I'm going to show you is Afghan Star. Um, it is a, a singing competition show, one of the most popular shows that we uh, have in Afghanistan. It's now in its seventh, seventh season, so we'll just have a look at the clip. I think it speaks for itself. The light's on. I can't do anything about that. Oh. Oh. The program itself, see, Herat, Mazar, Kunduz, Kandahar, Jalalabad, so it's not from one part. Afghanistan is different ethnics, Pashtun, Hazara, people from the north. These 30 years of war, all these internal fightings, even Kabul was distributed into five, six. So it's like rare that a Pashtun supports an Azar. And where in this show, a Pashtun does support an Azar, says that he's the best. This might affect Afghanistan's national unity for the long term. There are many ways so you can persuade people, get together, don't listen to others, do what an Afghan wants to do. When the Taliban was able to come to the house, we had to come to the house. We had to come to the house, we had to come to the house, and we had to come to the house. ما وقتی که سر استجام، وقتی که به مردم خوانر اونر نمایی میکنم، سر استجام هنگ میخوام، این مهمو اسازدی در وجود میمیاد. انقدر خوشحالم که به همو خوشالی نه خوشالیه که سر استجام رقص میکنم. دختری از شهر هیرات رقاصی به نام ستاری افغان نمیره و این شهری که در هر سرزمین در هر نقطه دو خون پاک شهید ریخته اما امروز اگر ادیب ادیب بر ما جفا میکنن اونا بدانن که محق موقت کار خواهد کردن بر دو مردم اجازی جفاکاری به این سرزمین شهدان نخواهد داد خانده میتونه هر زن بشه هر دختر بشه هر بچه بشه هم آیت آزاد نید یک دختر نه بعد یک سر آزاد باشه به ساخ و شور میده خوب نیه دیدنی و مقصد از این کارا نو میره دیار باید سنگینی زیار Okay, that's Afghan Star. It's come a long way in seven years. Um, that was one of the shows that we really had great difficulties getting across the line with the government. Um, in its beginning, it's basically brought back the celebration of music to Afghanistan, which is a really important thing. Um, it has more weekly viewers than The X Factor, 
does in the UK. It's a huge show for us. Um, now, you may not think that a woman dancing on stage with her head uncovered is such a big leap, but in Afghanistan it truly is. And um, in terms of female empowerment and equal rights, um, what's happening today on Afghan Star is a massive change in Afghanistan. Um, the next show I'm going to just quickly show you is Eagle 4. This was a groundbreaking action series um, in Afghanistan. We actually won an international drama award for this at the Seoul Drama Awards. Um, it basically brought a standard of production values to Afghan TV that had never been seen before. Um, it's basically, loosely based on the television show 24. It's about an, an elite police team who are tasked with combating the most serious security and criminal issues in Afghanistan today. It was a mix of men and women, um, and in our research that we did following the show, we found that the female characters were just as popular amongst all ages and demographics as the male characters. Um, so I'll just show you a quick clip from that now. And just one point, we don't have a rating system in Afghanistan. So we do a lot of front-end research before we make shows. We also do research after we do shows in the various provinces. But working in a company with 500 young people, you generally have a feel if something's working or not. Mi <laughs> عضو جوان گروه اخاب چهار کامران رهبر واحد نخبه قانون در افغانستان دلیر صادق با اعتماد سمیه فنی و آموزش دیده سیستونهای امنیتی با استعداد بکتاش یک مبارز جوان آیا اعتماد به نفس او او را به خطر خواهد انداخت اخاب چهار That's Eagle Four. So I've only just seen this today. I, I've turned up at the last minute. I'm replacing someone. So I apologise for the subtitling. I hadn't seen it before now. Um, yeah, Eagle Four, hugely successful show. Um, we did extensive research in nine provinces um, once that show had aired, and 76% of respondents said that their perception of the ANP had changed for the better following watching that show. Um, apart from making a jam-packed action series that got us a big audience and ad revenue, um, one of our objectives behind making that show was um, raising the profile of the ANP. I think one of the big issues around transition, which everyone will agree with me about is there's a fear that the uh, national security forces are not going to be ma able to maintain stability in the country once the international forces pull out. So part of our key messaging in that was to instil a trust in the ANP and to try and actually encourage recruitment to the ANP, um, as well as building morale within the ANP. Um, there was actually a noticeable spike in ANP recruitment during the run of that show. So a lot of our objectives were met. Um, that show did get a lot of international press um, because the production values were so high for Afghanistan. And I just want to read you one little quote. Um, this is from the Wall Street Journal where they interviewed a 12-year-old boy. The police on the show are great. They care for people and defuse bombs. The show makes me want to be a policeman. Uh, so in terms of the objectives that we had for making that show, I think that we did okay. Um, the next show I'm going to show you is the very first travel log show we ever had in Afghanistan called On the Road.
میدان تای میدان تای میدان و تای میدان That was another hugely successful show for us. That guy Mujib, who's the host, is one of the most charismatic people you ever meet. And he basically travelled around the country with a little two-man crew, visiting different villages and towns and provinces, um, and just hanging out with them, doing what they did, finding out about them, finding about their traditions and their culture. And I think in terms of creating um, a sense of Afghan unity, that show is very important. People who were never going to leave their village um, or their town um, are able to be exposed to the diversity of people and cultures and tradition in their country. Um, and in research we did afterwards, we found out that show was watched by 37% of the Afghan populace. It's a show watched by families. They all sit together and watch it and, and talk about it afterwards. Interestingly enough, Majib and his crew have just come back from filming On the Road in the USA. They visited a lot of Afghan communities there. Um, they, you know, did all the sightseeing and looked at the, the great landmarks. Um, but another interesting thing was that, that were, they were in New York for the 10th anniversary of 9-11. They attended a memorial service there. Um, he interviewed quite a few people. Um, the interesting thing about 9-11 in Afghanistan is that people are very confused about it or really don't know much about it or don't know anything about it at all. Amongst my creative team that I work with, most of them thought that 9-11 was a retaliation for America invading Afghanistan. So it will be very interesting to see what kind of response we get when that particular episode of On the Road is aired. Um, the next show I'm going to quickly show you... I'm doing okay for time, is Raza and Hannah. This is our weekly soap opera. Um, again, it's, it's got a huge following. It's in its um, fourth season now. And it's based around an extended family all living together in one house. Uh, the youngest member of the family is four years old. The oldest member is 80. Um, and much of the drama derives from the normal conflicts you'd have uh, with a big extended family with differing agendas and values and um, d differing ages. Um, we also, as well as having all that human drama that you have in soap operas, do try to cover major social issues that impact on Afghanistan. Um, we've looked at drug addiction, um, the importance of education, uh, major crime, corruption, um, the importance of retaining Afghan culture. Um, we'll have a little look at it and then I'll just talk a little bit about it later. در این خانه چی نوفته است؟ این خانه آبستن چی عوادث است؟ عشق عادثه انتقام فیبت بی حرمتی دو می پردازد کلی مارم مرخ ساخت و اتفاقاتی که سرنوشت ساکنان این خانه را رقم می زند چرا نتون جگر کنی نکنی؟ تو می پرش دوا کنی که خوب شد 
Chiede che non ci fai lavorare? Giù lo spesso da passo. Lei lì da mutar zve. Anni! Da c'è poco nas. Ma se ci capisce da? Perché lei lì da mutar zve. Ci ci va da qui giù. Ci sei il mecuni? Brugum show! Lei lì show con me, va ci. Tombia. Lei lì show con me? Lei lì da مادرم؟ Dramatic. Um, this is Afghanistan's first real homegrown drama. Um, generally, uh, a lot of programming on the TV stations is taken up with Indian and Turkish soap operas. And I think the immense popularity of this show is due to the fact that it's a show made by Afghans about Afghans. People are getting to see their lives on screen and it's proven to be incredibly popular. Um, Two thirds of the writers on that show are women. And so a lot of our storylines involve um, female empowerment, uh, women's rights, issues involving females. Um, you saw there there was a reference to Laylee dying. Um, I'll just make one point actually before I go on. It is very difficult to find actresses in Afghanistan. There is an incredible stigma around being on television. Um, so when you find a good young actress who's happy to play whatever role you give her, you just take her and you give her every storyline that you've been saving up for a couple of years. Um, we found a lovely young actress called Anita. She was playing Lele. Um, her family were happy for her to be on television, no issues with it. Um, and we gave her some very powerful storylines last season. Um, she was at university studying law. We put her in a storyline where her, one of her professor, professors was sexually harassing her. Um, she stood up to him, exposed the harassment, um, and had the man sacked from his job and arrested. Um, my writers also came up with a storyline whereby she was refusing to enter into an arranged marriage that her parents had set up for her. Um, the marriage was actually arranged before she was even born. And by the time she got to 19, which does occur, by the time she got to 19, the man she was meant to be marrying was a heroin addict and a petty criminal. Um, but her family had a lot of shame about backing out of the arrangement. It would be, you know, a great dishonour to them. Um, but she fought against her family and with the support of her brother managed to get herself out of that marriage. Um, my writers then decided that Laylee had had a pretty hard year. We'd given her some quite tough storylines and we wanted to give some happiness to her. So they came up with a storyline where she fell in love with her favourite cousin um, and the season finale was going to be their engagement party. Three weeks into filming this new storyline, Laylee turned up, or Anita, the actress, turned up in my office with her mother. Um, and in a very sad and ironic twist, they said that she couldn't be on the show anymore. Uh, they didn't want her to be engaged on television because then it might spoil her chances of getting engaged in real life. Um, so in true television fashion, my writer said, well, if you're going to leave the show, we're going to kill you off and get some drama potential out of it. Um, and we ended up writing a storyline where Laylee was killed by the... Uh, man who she was meant to marry and who she, she jilted. The day after Laylee got killed, I think was the day that we realised just how much of an impact her as a character had had um, in Raza and Hana. Uh, there were calls on talkback radio about Laylee's death because it was so sudden and un unexpected. Um, in my department, there were women from other departments marching in and out of the writers' room demanding to know why they'd killed off Laylee. Um, in the guest house where I live, I, one of the cleaners was tearily telling me how sad she was Laylee was killed and how her and her sisters had cried all night over it. Um, and I think we realised then that Laylee had her strength of character um, had made her a role model. She had become aspirational um, for Afghan women. And I think that kind of messaging and um, those kinds of female role models are very, very important on Afghan television. Okay, the last 
clip we're going to look at now is a comedy show called The Ministry. It was a mockumentary comedy, which uh, basically is set in a government ministry. No me ma daulatas. Ma tamam tasilat ali khuda da kishwar zulain da biterin donus gohai ya zul kishwar ba poyam rasandin. Wazir sir, me vaksin tiy tar taraf mas. Wa. konferans matbuati digara tartib bete. Ba bar mardum tashi kolen ke chetu bazi khordin ba bayak shaxs taqallubi 5 million zulain dar dadin. بر زن بزنن که من هم میتونم این کارا بکنم نه نه گوش گوش کن برای بگو که من مریض هستم حالت من خوب نیست حالت روانی من دیگرگون است میفهمی؟ فشار من تغییر کده این دفتر یک وزیر است یا استدیو یک فلم برداری ها؟ تو ببین این پرده های مزخرف چطل مزخرف در اینجا بند بند کدی برای گان شد کسلا و برد وزیزا کسلا و برد Yeah, that's my favourite show. Um, our CEO, Saad Massini, had this agenda ever since I've known him that he wanted to make a show which was going to mock the government. Um, he wanted to talk about issues of uh, nepotism and corruption and, you know, ineptus, ineptness. Um, and he wanted to set it in a government ministry. Uh, the trouble was it was very difficult for us to position that kind of show. Um, firstly, we were afraid that we wouldn't find, and, and, and a very real fear, we wouldn't find actors who are going to be willing to get up on national television and play bumbling, um, corrupt government ministers. You know, and there is a very real fear around that. Um, and our second fear was that the government, the Ministry of Information and Culture, would just pull the show off air. Um, or at the very least would censor it so heavily that you know, we didn't retain any of the original intentions and humour behind the show. Um, so our creative team came up with a solution that we would set the ministry in a fictitious country called Hetchland which means nothing land. Um, everyone speaks Dari, everyone looks Afghan, but it's not Afghanistan, it's Hetchland. Um, so we said it in the Ministry of Garbage in Hetchland. Having said that, that it was a fictitious country, my writers were determined that they were going to base all the storylines on current um, important events that were happening in Afghanistan. So much so that when Osama bin Laden was killed in Pakistan, they went on a three-day writing frenzy to desperately rewrite the final two scripts to, to, to reference his death. His name was Big Johnny in our show, not Osama bin Laden. Um, the show was a huge success. We put a four-minute clip on YouTube and within 36 hours we had 50,000 hits. Um, Various catchphrases and um, that the minister uses have become part of everyday language. He says something which you, you loosely translates to, that's impossible. And my kids just do that all the time with their big eyes rolling. Um, and the demand for the show was so great. It was a little bit of a sleeper. People didn't really know what it was at the beginning. It was a bit of a sleeper. Um, but the demand for the show was so great towards the end of the eight-part season that we had to do a back-to-back -back marathon of episodes one to six before we could show the final two episodes. Um, there was a lot of interesting discussion in the international community around this show. Um, I had a very inter interesting discussion with someone from the US State Department who was dead against it and said, you know, this isn't helping transition. We're supposed to be promoting the Afghan government and we're supposed to be instilling trust in the Afghan government and you're just tearing it all down. Um, but the reality is we're not touching on anything here that we're not touching on in our news and current affairs. And Afghans really do think that this is an important issue for them. And by doing it via humour, I think it makes it much more accessible and easier to talk about. 
Um, and we're currently in writing a second season of that show. It's probably the most popular show that we've had. Um, that's it for my little presentation. Uh, I don't think I've got anything more to say. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you both for this impressive and um, wonderful inside view of your work. Um, even so, we are a bit beyond our schedule already. I think we still should take the opportunity and have the audience ask some questions. Thank you very much. I'm very impressed by your work and spirit. And I hope that especially uh, you, the lady from Afghanistan, can go on to work like this the next 20 or 30 years and have many uh, students. And, um, but one um, um, piece is missing for me. Even uh, for European television, we have the debates as far television should be entertainment, what type of entertainment, and how far it should be education, uh, political education and general education in our uh, countries. And so I was missing an information about, um, but maybe I did not listen well enough, uh, on uh, Quran and Islam, because as far as I know, the Taliban have their own religious legitimation and uh, they, are, they are the madrasas in Pakistan giving rather bad uh, Islamist uh, education, which is influencing the conflict situation. And so I would be very interested to hear, isn't there any religious education program and is there a more moderate line? Is there, and in which hands is it? Maybe we collect two more questions and then get the answer. Uh, the Herr in Karierten Hemd here vorne. Thank you. My name is Lanting from the Netherlands. I had a question to Ms. Tierney. Did at any time one of your programs try to get Mr. Kazai before camera and did he come or did he do or do not at other uh, stations? Uh, well, just one just one more question. Then I'm you Karin can... Albers here from Berlin. I have one question about this television, movie television. It's a private television. Who is paying it? Who is financing? Who is behind? Okay, thank you. Then we just. I think it works. Okay, if uh, I. Uh, got correctly the question uh, about the, um, some kind of uh, coverage uh, regarding the training of the uh, Islamic uh, TV. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, of course, in, uh, in Afghan Af Af all media have a um, part of their uh, broadcasting uh, as a uh, religion, religions, religions, uh, sorry for bad English, uh, religion uh, uh, things. Every radio and every TV have this kind of programs, especially in the Fridays, which is the um, prayer day for uh, Afghanistan, and also the other uh, time they have uh, different programs. But uh, uh, if, uh, if I want to add something about uh, some taboos, still uh, Afghan media have a lot of taboos and couldn't talk, talk uh, about uh, a lot of things, like uh, we can't do any uh, discussion about the uh, religion. And uh, very um, light uh, discussion is ongoing in some TVs and radios. But a deep uh, 
discussion is not uh, possible. Also, uh, Afghan media cannot to talk about the sex at all in the TVs. I remember uh, our group in 2004 started to have some messages at the um, one um, uh, page of the magazine, or some page of magazines, uh, national magazine by the name of Kilid, to put some uh, messages uh, regarding HIV AIDS. On that time, we were very clear to put very light and very simple uh, messages. But slowly, slowly, now we, we can put a little, uh, a little uh, strong messages regarding HIV AIDS awareness in our magazine, in our radio. This uh, got a, lo a little uh, developed, but uh, uh, at all uh, we have taboos still in our media. Um, Karzai? Yes, we had a, um, he's not a great fan of Moby Media. Um, we did have a debate during the last presidential election. He was coming, he wasn't coming. It was the major candidates. Um, he was coming, he wasn't coming. And at the last minute, he just didn't turn up. And so we just left a, a blank podium there where he should have been um, as our statement of his refusal to turn up. So, yeah, he's not a great fan. He probably a lot earlier in the piece agreed to do a lot of more television with um, Moby Media, but not so much these days. Um, and as for funding, um, the Massini family basically invested everything they had to set up Moby Media at the beginning. Um, they did get international assistance in terms of equipment for building studios, um, cameras, sound equipment, things like that. Um, but we do have quite good ad revenue. Um, we've got major telcos, banks, um, airlines, um, large companies like Nestle who advertise through us. So a lot of our shows are made, a lot of the funding of the company is done through ad revenue. Um, of course, it's no secret that there are international agencies who also want things to be broadcast with particular messaging from PSAs to longer form um, programming. Um, they put up contracts for bidding and like every other production company and broadcaster in Afghanistan, we bid for those contracts and sometimes we get them. So um, yeah, they're the ways we get funding to sustain Moby Media. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we can have maybe two more questions before we uh, go into lunch break. Genau, einmal hier vorne und danach Sie, bitte. Äh, und die zweite Reihe. Mein Name ist Rade, ich bin freier Journalist. Ich vermisse immer noch äh, Filme in staatlichen und privaten Fernsehen. Äh, oh, das okay. Gut, ja. Mein Name ist Sade, ich bin freier Journalist. Ich vermisse immer noch äh, äh, gute Filme in staatlichen und privaten Fernsehen. Äh, meistens sehe ich äh, Filme von Gewalt, Zerstörung, Tod, Blut und äh, solche traurige Bilder, die Afghanistan seit 30 Jahren erlebt. Und wenn Sie von Tagesgeschehen äh, nach Hause müde kommen und wollen Sie Fernseher anschalten, da vermissen sie liebe Filme, Gesang, Geborgenheit. Und wenn man äh, die Geschichte der Bundesrepublik Deutschland äh, kennt, die Bilder nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg, da man tausende alte und junge Männer und Frauen auf der Straße gesehen, die mit bloßen Händen, mit Schaufel, damals habe ich bei äh, Filmen äh, keine Bagger gesehen, sie haben die Straßen von Krieg, von Zerstörung äh, gesaubert. Das war ein Klima von äh, Frieden, von Geborgenheit, und von Liebe, die haben einander geholfen, in Dörfer haben einander, was sie nicht hatten oder hatten, Essen verteilt. Aber in Afghanistan ist immer äh, diese Bilder, äh, die Gewalt und Zerstörung. Das ist wirklich an der Zeit, dass diejenigen, die Filme machen, versuchen, asiatische Länder sind äh, sehr verrückt nach Liebefilmen. Früher waren die indischen Filme, haben sie gesehen. Von viel, sie haben die Tagesalltag haben sie vergessen und wollten ein bisschen Geborgenheit. Aber solche Filme gibt es nicht. Meinen Sie, die solche guten Filme 
hat keine Zuschauer in Afghanistan und unter diesem Markt, diesem Geld, möchte man andere Filme machen und den, äh, das Film zu verkaufen. Ich danke schön. Okay, vielen Dank. Uh, a very brief question uh, to come back on the financing of your programs. In the very beginning, you mentioned that a certain family invested all its money into the program. I'm sorry, I hope I'm not the only one who doesn't know this family and who would very much like to hear more about this family. Thank you. Do you want to respond to this immediately? Yeah. I think uh, regarding uh, your question, uh, we have to divide in two uh, parts. One, uh, in Afghanistan have, uh, in the Afghanistan story, people like Indian film a lot. It was in a period which the other uh, countries film was uh, coming to Afghanistan, but not that much which uh, the Indian film Come. And also, this is, you know, this is the region and access to the films are very, uh, is very easy. Because of that, a lot of, uh, it was very familiar, the, the uh, Indian uh, stars was very familiar in Afghanistan and Afghan people, especially the youth generation, had a lot of uh, relation with this uh, uh, movies. And they like it on one. And the other, uh, when the TVs in Afghanistan broadcast the films from India or uh, other country, uh, it also have two parts. One is a need to have uh, to be ever what happened, what made in other uh, countries, uh, what kind of films make in other countries. Uh, but the other, uh, the big uh, part of this is. Uh, belong to problem of production of the TVs in Afghanistan. They have not that much capacity to fill all the 24 hours. And this is a big uh, problem. As I mentioned before, Afghan media have no support from uh, government. No support. That is why we have uh, a lot of uh, problem with our uh, mm, uh, financial Problems. We have 150 uh, radios around the country, but I know a lot of them are not able to produce one program in a week. And this is the, the a lot of these radios are just named. They just broadcast the other programs, just the very simple and like programs like requesting the music. And the music is also coming from the. Uh, other countries uh, and also from Afghanistan buying for 30 Afghanis, which is less than one dollar, because we have no copyright yet in Afghanistan. And this is also another problem uh, put uh, Afghan artists in uh, travel. And regarding the TVs, uh, it is uh, so difficult for uh, uh, TV uh, for currently situation to fill a lot, uh, to fill 24 hours with the films. Uh, but a very small, uh, mm, very uh, small production is started, some TVs uh, started to do some uh, films and serials, but in Afghanistan and to, uh, 47 uh, TVs, it's not enough. And that is why uh, Afghanistan filmmakers have, uh, have complained a lot regarding this, because they, they need support of government. They, they need to uh, produce new films to, to feed the Afghan uh, bazaar for the film. Thank you. Just one point on the films. Uh, making feature films takes a lot of money. Um, and I think Najiba is right. We don't have any government funding bodies in Afghanistan who are supporting filmmaking. Um, as a TV station, we're not personally invested in making feature films. But I just want to mention um, the Human Rights Film Festival, the first international human rights festival, was just held in Afghanistan a few months ago. And some truly beautiful films were shown at that 
They were short films. Um, but it does show that our young filmmakers, uh, the 50 films were screened over the course of three days, um, and it does show that our, our young filmmakers do want to tell stories of peace um, and love. Um, they just need to find the money to do it in a feature-length version. Um, the Massini family, they're an Afghan-Australian family. Um, basically, it's three brothers and a sister. Um, the three brothers, uh, Saad was an investment banker, Jahid and Zayed were both lawyers, and Wajma, the sister, worked in marketing. And they basically came in in 2002 and decided that they wanted to make a difference in Afghanistan. Um, in the early days, Jahid was the brother who was in country, um, and there's stories of him, when they had their first transmitter tower, he would literally be up there with an instruction manual and a mobile phone trying to fix the tower himself. They really did it tough in the early days. They're enjoying incredible success now, and I personally think they deserve it. They really invested in the media in Afghanistan when there was nothing happening. Um, so, yeah, quite a remarkable family. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you both again for this very interesting presentation.